Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. Lock is a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Welcome back to God's Playbook. Friends, today I want us to think about our Confirmation Day. With Pentecost on the horizon on Sunday, I want us to really reflect upon that day where we receive the Holy Spirit and the sacrament of confirmation, where we received his seven gifts and the 12 fruits of the Spirit. For some of us, it might have been very recently. Perhaps you're a convert to the faith. Perhaps you received your confirmation recently if you're a young person. Or perhaps if it's like me, it's been several decades since we received our confirmation. And nonetheless, This coming down of the Holy Spirit is renewed every Pentecost where we recommit ourselves to live the missionary call that God has given to each of us to go and tell the world the good news and to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit to live lives that are holy and pleasing to God. So I want you to think about the day of your confirmation. Do you remember it? How old were you when you received your confirmation? Were you in grade 7 or 8, depending on where you lived? In some parts of the United States, they do it in grade 10. Perhaps you've been through the RCIA process and received it as an adult. Or perhaps you're part of the Eastern Rites of the Church, where you received confirmation as an infant on the day of your baptism. For those listeners who's never been confirmed, while you cannot recall your confirmation, I still invite you to actively engage in today's exercise. What church were you confirmed in? Perhaps your local parish that you've been a part of for a very long part of your life. Perhaps you may have received it at your local cathedral. Perhaps you received it in a church that you no longer worship in because you've moved or your life has changed since that time. Who was the sponsor that you chose for your confirmation? We know as church, we are called to choose somebody who we ourselves feel is modeling faith for us. Which sponsor did you choose to stand behind you with their right hand on their right shoulder, showing to us, helping us, being that witness that we do not journey in faith alone. Is this person still a part of your life? If the person is called home to heaven, when's the last time you prayed for them and thanksgiving for their faith witness in your life? If the person is still alive, When's the last time you and they had a conversation together, especially in regards to faith? Perhaps this week we can commit ourselves to having a conversation with our sponsor. Let's make sure that we spend some time today praying for them, thanking God for their witness in our lives and for their commitment to pray for us, to walk with us, and to continue to answer faith questions as we evolve in our relationship with Jesus. Did you choose a saint name? The church continues to encourage us to take on a saint name so that that patron saint can have a special bond with us as we continue to grow towards holiness ourselves. The saint we chose, whether it is a male or a female, is to model faith for us, while they, not perfect in any way, struggle through the highs and lows of faith, their faith witness is to inspire us to do the same, to make holy and righteous decisions, to help to grow in God's image and likeness. What was the saint that you chose for your confirmation name? How has your spirituality deepened in regards to a relationship with that saint. 
do you continue to call upon him or her to assist you in growing in faith? As a patron saint of perhaps many different aspects of life, do you call upon his or her intercession to guide you, your family, and friends? How can that saint help you in regards to growing in faith right now? As we continue in this Easter season, it's a reminder to us that these saints, like ourselves, were called by God to a special mission. Their mission doesn't end when they get to heaven, it just changes. As we ask their intercession and the power of their intercessory prayer, are we willing to call upon the powers of heaven to assist us, to shape us, to transform us? Which bishop confirmed you? If you don't remember the bishop's name, what a great opportunity for us to go into our scrapbooks or into our boxes to pull that out. What day was I confirmed? Have I prayed for the bishop who confirmed me? Whether he's living or deceased, he could certainly benefit from our prayers in thanksgiving for his yes to be a local apostle. Who was my pastor at the time that was responsible to help me to grow in faith, to prepare me for the reception of the sacrament of confirmation? When's the last time I prayed for my priest who helped me to guide me in faith? my teachers, or catechists? When's the last time I prayed for him or her who again helped me to come to know the power of the Holy Spirit, to come to know the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit and how we could use them in our lives? Do I lift them in prayer too? Perhaps we can recommit ourselves to lift that bishop, the priest, the teachers and catechists in prayer, thanking God for their powerful witness of desiring to teach us our faith so we can come to know God in a very real way. Do you remember some of the family and friends who attended your confirmation, most specifically our parents and perhaps even our baptismal godparents? Siblings, grandparents, aunts, uncles, special friends, parish community members. Are we thankful to God for their presence in our lives? Please God helping us to continue to grow in faith too. Do you have any photographs of the day of your confirmation? Visual reminders of how the Holy Spirit descended upon you in a very powerful and real way. Perhaps digging out those photos, if we haven't seen them in a while, might remind us of the impact that the Holy Spirit had for us in that moment. Recall when the bishop stood before you, asked your saint name, and said those beautiful words, Words that brought down the Holy Spirit upon you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we responded, Amen. Peace be with you. The words of Jesus risen from the dead and our response, and with your spirit. How did you feel when you received chrism on your forehead? Did you feel at peace? Did you feel the Holy Spirit upon you in a very special way? Feeling the right hand of your sponsor on the one shoulder, did you sense your patron saint 
placing their hand on your other shoulder. Perhaps it's years later that you renew that feeling that you were first given on your confirmation day. Or perhaps it's so long ago that it's just a blur for you. Regardless of how much or how little we remember, friends, this week as we anticipate the birthday of the church, I'm going to continue to guide us to really slow down and pay attention to the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so let's spend the time today by blocking out the noise and really focusing on our confirmation. Feel free to ask family and friends, parents, sponsors, how they felt, how they've seen us grow in faith, hopefully not go backwards in faith, but in some cases that's true too. Faith through life can be like a roller coaster, sometimes forward, sometimes backwards. Let's spend the time now in thanksgiving thanking the Holy Spirit for choosing us by name and giving us the many gifts and fruits that we are called to use, apply, and rely on every day of our lives. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the gifts and fruits that you gave us on the day of our confirmation. As we look forward to renewing our commitment on Sunday on the feast of Pentecost and the birthday of the church, may we recall that day where we became full members of the church and received you just as you came down upon Mary and those apostles. Bless our godparents, the bishop the priest, the teachers, the catechists, our family and friends, all who helped us to that day and all who have helped us since to grow, to love, and to come to know you more. Come, Holy Spirit. Friends, again, let's use this time today to be thankful For the Holy Spirit has blessed us, and today is a great day to think about how he has blessed us. I'm thankful to God for the blessing of each of you, for saying yes to the missionary call that God is calling you to. Never underestimate the impact that you are making in the world, but make sure that you are rooted in Christ to know that every good deed that you and I do is first a movement of the Holy Spirit in us. And then our response is a reaction to that movement. For those of you yet to be confirmed, I invite you to open your heart to listen to that call of the Holy Spirit, perhaps listening to this podcast in curiosity but striving to come to know God more. Could the Holy Spirit be calling you to this sacrament this coming year? Think about that. Pray about it. Talk to your local priest. Talk to a faith-filled Catholic that you know attends church. What an awesome opportunity to engage in conversation about this very topic. Come Holy Spirit. Friends, for God's Playbook, I'm Father Rico. May you be blessed as you reflect upon your confirmation. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.